the discus throw. We break the discus down into eight components. The stance, the wind up, the start, the first turn, the second turn, power position, the throw, and the reverse. The grip, there are two methods, the spread and the claw. The spread you see here. In each, we keep the center of the hand slightly behind the center of the discus. This is the claw grip with the middle and the index finger together. The center of gravity again slightly behind the center of the discus. This is the strongest of the two grips. Here we see the release and the release is off the index finger and this can be taught by throwing the discus out or up like a bowling ball. In the stance, the stance should be wide but comfortable, the left foot on the center line. Center line bisecting the center of the circle. In the wind up, a down and up rhythm shifting the weight from the right back over the left. Nice long motion with the discus. A definite down and up motion. This can even be exaggerated with younger throwers. Catch the discus on the upswing. This helps relax the throwing arm and the shoulders and moves the discus over a longer period. In the start, shift the center of gravity over the left pivot on the ball of the left foot. Nice pivot on the ball of the left foot. In the first turn, stay on the balls of the feet. Do not let the heels touch from this point on. Develop linear speed by pushing the left hip in the direction of the throw. It is not a fast motion. Simply allow the hips to fall in the direction of the, thro of the throw as you see here. The left arm should sweep wide to help gain rotary momentum. Then a wide radius with the right leg, the heaviest part of the body. The wider the radius, the greater the potential rotary momentum built up. Sprint out of the back of the ring when the left shoulder is in the direction of the throw. Do not over rotate in the back of the ring. The left shoulder in the direction of the throw here and begin the sprint out of the back of the ring. So that as the athlete leaves the back of the ring, the chest will be in the direction of the throw. The right knee bend at about 90 degrees as it comes to the center to shorten the radius to help conserve the rotary momentum built up from the back of the ring by the wide right leg and the wide left arm. 90 degree bend at the knee. Maintain that 90 degree bend throughout the second turn. The left arm comes close to the body to increase the rotary action as it completes the first turn. Land on the toes with the center of gravity over the right foot. Stay up high on the toes all the way through the first and the second turn and through the power position even. Center of gravity must stay back over the right foot throughout the second turn. Up high on the toes. Center of gravity back over the right leg. In the second turn, be sure to stay up on the toes. The higher the athlete is on the toes, the less friction and the faster he will rotate through the second turn.
You want to maintain as much of the rotary velocity built up as possible. Bring the left heel up high, close to the buttocks. This helps, again, to facilitate the rotary motion through the center of the ring. The center of gravity must be over the right foot throughout the turn. This is a very, very critical position. There's a center of gravity in the mid part of the body. And as the athlete goes through the second turn, the center of gravity does not shift forward, but stays back over the right foot. The right hip comes around the same relative position as it was when it landed out of the first turn. Keep the angle at the knee and the ankle joint constant and the center of gravity must stay back over the right foot. The left foot reaches for the front of the ring, the center of gravity back over the right, and the left leg will be nearly straight. The discus stays high and as close to 360 degrees back as possible, indicating certainly the need for great flexibility. Keep the left toe in line with the right heel. The left leg is straight. This is to help open the hips and keep the hips ahead of the throw. The left arm sweeps wide, center of gravity still back over the right. The heels must not touch. Turn the foot. If the right foot turns, the knee and the hip will follow. They must follow. This allows the athlete to concentrate on keeping the foot against the ground, creating force against the ground for a longer period of time. Turn the foot, the knee and the hip follow. The left arm will sweep wide in the same plane as the discus, then will lock down to the side decelerating the left side of the body to zero. The hips must be ahead of the shoulders until the release. This is accomplished by keeping the center of gravity back over the right foot throughout the second turn and throughout the power phase and the throw, right up to the point of release. Note how far ahead of the shoulder the hips are. The point of the hip and the point of the shoulder. This is what we call separation. Separation between the lower and the upper body. Block the left side and lift. The left leg is straight at the release, the left arm against the side. Release the discus at shoulder level. Stay high on the toes, the head and eyes should be up. The left foot leaves the ground before the right. On the reverse, the left leg goes back and straight, drop the torso, rotate one turn, and the athlete should be back in control after one turn. Lower the center of gravity, keep the left leg back and straight, help counterbalance the body. If the energy has been expended into the discus, then the athlete should be able to get back on control after one turn back into the center of the ring. This is Mac Wilkins throwing 225 feet, four inches at the 1980 Olympic trial. We'll see this three different times for technique study and then faster for the rhythm of the throw. Note the nice down and up motion Catch the discus on the upswing. This is to help relax the upper body, move the discus over the longest range possible. Nice pivot on the left foot here so that he can swing the discus back further. Nice long, wide sweep of the left arm. Watch the hips fall towards the center of the circle to gain linear momentum. No quick motion. Like keep the hips out ahead of the knee wide right leg for the wide radius, wide left arm for radius. Bend the right knee as he goes to the center to shorten the radius 
and conserve the momentum built up from the back. Keep the center of gravity back over the right foot throughout the second turn. The left leg is down straight. Block the left side of the body now. Pivot on the right foot. The knee and the hip will follow. There's the block on the left side. Left arm down close to the body. And a long extension. The discus released at shoulder level. Reverse. Drop the torso. One turn and back into control. And note the smooth, fluid motion throughout. No great speed at the back. The speed comes in the center from developing the linear and rotary momentum. Then that speed is transferred into the discus by stopping the left side of the body and accelerating the right side of the body into the throw. Block the left side, the long release. This is a drill for balance, teaching the athlete to keep balance over the left leg as he rotates and staying up on the toes, keeping the knees the same distance apart throughout this turn. Don't allow the knees to come in close. This is what we call a Wilkins walkthrough. It is a drill to simply walk through the various points of the technique, keeping the right leg wide, keeping the center of gravity over the right foot as you land in the center of the circle. Walk right on around, keeping the center of gravity back over the right leg into a position where the left toe is in line with the right heel, the left arm is wide. This is a center of the circle Powell drill, simply pivoting back and forth, learning to pivot on that right foot, keeping the toes off the surface, keeping the center of gravity over the right leg. This is a pop drill where the center of gravity is kept back over the right side, the left foot pops off the ground before the right, then the pop and the reverse. This is a drill to keep the center of gravity back over the right leg throughout the power position and into the throw. This is an advanced drill. This is using a pop from the back of the ring Powell drill. Stand in the back of the ring, drive across the ring, keep the center of gravity back, pop the left leg up and go into the reverse. A difficult drill to do, but very important to teach rotary momentum and to keep the center of gravity where it belongs. This is what we call a pirouette drill to simply teach conservation of rotary momentum, teach the athlete to spin by bringing the right leg bent at 90 degrees and in tight to the body. In the coaching points, teach the use of the legs to develop rotary momentum, develop linear momentum by hip lead. Right foot directly under the knee when the athlete sprints out of the back of the ring. Keep the center of gravity over the right foot throughout the second turn and in the power position. The left arm wide at the start, close to the body in the middle of the throw. Stay on the toes throughout the entire throw. In the throw, turn the right foot and lift. Knee and the hip will follow. The right hip ahead of the right shoulder. I'll be back.